Some vintage paper. Never throw away your good paper. You never know when you need it. So put that down like that. We'll take our sanding block. Resembles this. Let's see how flat this is. See any high spots at all?
That's pretty good. No more sandy block needed. Okay. See, that was worn 220 paper, so pretty fine. You can see the dirt and muck that was coming off the table, residue. Our new dirty rag. Don't use this for assembly motors anymore. I got grinding grid in here now. Don't want to transfer your contaminations. See, it's getting dirty, which means it's transferring crap in the table into my rag. Okay. Feels pretty damn smooth. So now we got a nice good surface here. It's nice and flat overall. It's got a little dimpling in here and there, but it doesn't hurt anything. It's being flat overall, which you want. <clears throat> so you take a piece of paper, make sure it's nothing on the back side causing a problem. You lay it up on there like that. And you can do a little sanding. So here's our outer cover, look the best. We'll try that out and see how it feels. Now one thing about paper, it's always going to have a pressure wave in front of it. Just like a boat going through a river, it leaves that wave. And that leading edge is always going to dig in. So you want to always keep moving this thing around so it stays as flat as you can. Also, don't push on the front, push on the back. Or in the middle. Keep rotating. Never push on the leading edge. So, just like when we sanded it, it felt high on the outside edges. You can see it now. It is high on the outside edges. Like I said, this is 220 paper. It's worn pretty heavy, so it's going to take a little bit of effort to get that down to zero. You can see it's already coming in through here. Most of the work's going to be up on here. So push more on the outside. put more pressure on this side because I want to cut more on the outside. So you can see how this one's coming in pretty good here. And it's starting to come in over here a little bit, but a little more effort. Now if it go to a coarser paper, it would come in a lot easier. This is pro grade paper. It's got like glue on the back side, so it's staying stuck to my table pretty damn nice. It makes this a lot easier to do. I don't have to hold the paper. See how it's coming in pretty good there now? Not bad. Pretty fine paper. All right. What's this paper? This is 120 grit. P120 Pro Grade again. It's got that stickum stuff on the back. I don't think they make that anymore with the stickum on the back, but maybe. 3M Pro Grade. quite stick as easy as that last one did. One reason is because it's got more drag on it when I'm trying to sand. You want to try to use all the paper you can. Paper wears too like everything else.
that comes in a lot easier. See, 220 was just too darn, too fine. You want to have some grit or some surface area for the paper, the gasket to bite into also. You don't want to have a mirror finish on paper. So the 220 was just not quite where I wanted to be at. This worn out 120 is probably more like 220 grit really when you're done, but you can see how it cuts a lot better. Okay, that's pretty nice. Definitely getting a workout. We'll give it a few more strokes. Using kind of a circular pattern, as you can tell. So I got a piece bad piece of paper here, so if you just get rid of that, you can go across it without digging in. Okay, that's looking pretty damn nice now. So I'm happy with that. Now if I stuck that on my surface grinder over here and hit on that grinder, it would cut the hell out of the leading edge and make it a bowl shape like this. Guaranteed. So you want to do it by hand. It takes a little more effort, but it's a lot better job when you're done. It makes you hot too. There. Ooh, a lot better. Ooh, too much work. Okay. So we got our main oil pump body. This one was really bad right through here with a cut on it. So we're going to do a little sanding on it. You'll see what it looks like pretty quickly. It should highlight it real quick. You can hear how uneven it is, too. When you first put something down, don't push too hard. You can tear the paper. But the high spots are going to dig in. paper big time there. Get rid of that piece so it doesn't stick there no more and stand over it. Okay, so now you can see how uneven the surface is. See the cut marks right here from file. Someone filed it like this. There's dowel pins right here. You can barely see the dowel pin there, but when they cut the dowel pin off sand of not take filed it, you can see the file mark going right across where the oil hole is. We're able to block that off so that's not a major issue, but the problem is is the gasket still has to seal to that. And this cavity up in here that goes down into this side, the pressure side of the pump. This is all pressure here. This is return side here. So return's not a major pressure issue, but this whole cavity in here is going to pressurize for the high pressure oil and that can blow right through and leak out the side of the bike or leak back and bypass back in the return side of the pump, which you don't want either. So we want to try to sand this to get some of this out. You can see how this is really low through here also. Let's see, we're going to block this off, but you have to have something for the gasket to seal against to block it. You can't just have it open. So that's going to take some effort. Now this side here to do, I'm about to knock this pin down and then get across this surface. This surface doesn't look too bad. But we got to knock this pin down to see what it really needs to do that side. So take a visual look at see how far below the surface it is. So it's probably the height of the gear. So let me go grab a gear to make sure.
All right, so here's your gear. So you can see how the pins to hide to the gear. So that gives you a good go, no go gauge on where to put it back to. And so that will keep that out here as we can tell. So I'm just going to knock this down a little bit here. The legs here, the milling slots work good because you place for the pin to go down to. Just take a ball peen hammer, hit it flat, you should be all right. It's moving pretty fairly easy. Make sure you don't hit on the body itself. Okay, we're below the surface now, I think. Can't see it. Now I was hitting with a hammer, I was hitting like this right here, making sure I didn't hit on the body, because I didn't want to hit the body. Now if I put a punch on there, it would have been a lot better, but yeah. I'm good enough I can do it without the punch, without doing it that way. Okay, let's see what we got here. paper looks like junk but it still works really good. A few holes in it. Oh well. Not a big deal. Keep a place for the grip to collect. Now this torn up area over here I keep coming across, that's a problem. It's gonna eventually tear the whole piece out. Probably should just tear it out there right now to get rid of it. And stick on it. There you go. Yep. See how far I could go before I caught it. Still catches on it, so we gotta be careful. Paper's blocking the front and caught it to hit on it. Paper's got to stay flat. Even though that wouldn't do anything, it was holding the paper flatter, and I was buckling on anymore. Yeah, a few more times, it's going to tear itself apart. Oh well. I'm going to get some use out of it though. Okay, that side looks pretty flat. I'm getting most of the machine marks out of it. The original machine marks are in there. Getting most of those out of there. This is also tightening up our glare clearance. Just give you more wall pressure too. Moving the pump around. Alright. Alright, looks pretty good. I think that's adequate for that side. Paper should seal on that pretty good. I don't see anything that's really a problem area anywhere. So it looks overall looks pretty damn nice. Okay, I think we're gonna leave that alone. This side over here gotta do a lot of work on this side. It sucks. Pretty bad on this side. This side over here, not too bad. I wonder what the gear height is.
be nice if the gear was sticking above the surface right now. It's barely sticking above the surface. It's only a thou or two above. Not much. Yeah. You want to keep your back clearance as thin as you can so you don't blow by pressure. So, all right. I could sand on it some more, take a couple more thou off, but it's a lot of work. So, I'm not building a race motor here. All right, I'm going to work on this side a little bit. We'll be back.